Understanding counterparty credit risk is crucial to make sure your next asset intensive transaction is a success. Find out why. When I think about asset intensive transaction, I think about a reinsurer taking over the responsibility for assets from an insurance company. And really the aim of that reinsurer is to be able to invest those assets in order to pay future claims for the underlying insurance products. So the performance is going to depend very much on to be able to generate the right amount of spread and yield from the assets, but also thoroughly understand the liabilities that it's supporting in the underlying product. The types of products that you'll find in an asset intensive transaction can vary quite a bit. Anything from fixed annuities to indexed annuities, the multiple types of life insurance as well. These transactions are typically strategically important to the organizations that are doing them. They're big, they're complex, and they can take a lot of effort to be able to execute. You might have heard about asset intensive given the increase in the amount of market activity over the last several years. A lot of insurance companies are finding asset intensive to also be capital intensive and resource intensive. So insurance companies are looking at opportunities to move away from these blocks as they've proven to be a little bit more financially challenging than initially expected. As part of that, they're trying to free up capital to support on other areas of growth and other opportunities that might demand less capital, but also allow them to engage more directly with their, their customer base and develop products. Reinsurance can be an important part of supporting that, as well as freeing up some of the capital from their back book. You might ask, why reinsurance? Well, reinsurers in this space tend to come with a particular risk appetite for these types of products. They bring in investment expertise to be able to invest the assets in a sufficient and attractive way. And lastly, they have, typically have the expertise or capabilities to be able to underwrite the products themselves and understand what they're taking on. All of this has led to a pretty attractive proposition for insurance companies, which is a big part of the reason we've seen so much growth over the last several years. One of the great things about the marketplace today for asset intensive transactions is that it is offering insurance companies quite a bit of choice between providers. There's the opportunity to look at the landscape and think about who's going to offer the right financial proposition, who's going to be the right counterparty, and who's going to match up best with the products and solutions that are underlying the, the transaction. With that choice comes the responsibility to understand the landscape and the different business models that exist within the players in this space. We've seen a lot of new entrants come in. A lot of those new entrants are actually the reinsurers that are sponsored by private equity-backed companies. And these private equity-backed companies do look and feel a little bit different than the traditional players. They tend to be looking at asset-intensive transactions as, a, uh, as an attractive source of funding for their investments. They look at it as a way to accumulate assets to be able to manage and earn fees. In order to, to, to do that and get beyond some of the initial stigma that comes with being a new player in this market, they tend to, to try to utilize some of the more specialized investments and try to make the model work as efficiently as possible to limit the amount of capital they have to put up to, to get to an attractive price point and offering for an insurance company looking to proceed with the transaction. If you compare that with a traditional player in this space, which perhaps is, it a, is a reinsurance company that's got a broad diversified balance sheet, they might look at it as intensive as, a, as an attractive spot to deploy risk capital to be able to support their longstanding clients in a way that is mutually beneficial. Yeah, just, just for a little background, when an insurance company goes into a reinsurance transaction, of course the interest is to transfer the economic risk associated with the underlying block of business. An insurance company though, however, is still gonna be on point and responsible for the ongoing administration of the block, the interaction with policyholders, and really putting their brand and wait in front of any reinsurance arrangement to make sure the financial security exists for the underlying policyholder. To facilitate that, the reinsurer is actually gonna reimburse typically the insurance company for claims that come due from the insurance product. So when you think about worst case exposure or outcome for reinsurance, it's, it's really the risk that the reinsurer is not in a position to be able to reimburse the insurance company for those claims as they come due. In the asset intensive space, that potential financial shortfall a lot of times can be driven by what's going on in the financial markets, the underlying investment performance of the assets supporting that deal. So on the path to that sort of outcome, of course the insurance company is gonna, they're gonna wonder, they're gonna wanna know how well is the reinsurer holding up 
in an environment where the treaty might be underperforming? What's the broader block of business that the reinsurer has on their books doing? What kind of early warning signs can you get as an insurance company to be able to understand if things are not going as well as originally expected? Those are the types of things that an insurance company is going to want to understand and evaluate along the way to make sure they're in a spot to manage the treaty. We think modeling counterparty credit risk is an important part of the decision-making process that goes into deciding whether or not to pursue with the reinsurance transaction and then also selecting between different counterparties. The modeling we're talking about doing is, is a way of being able to look at the total all-in cost to compare the quotes across these reinsurance companies. The model that we would suggest putting together is going to follow a few main principles to be able to capture all of that. Fundamental to that model is understanding what the chance of the reinsurance company defaulting is today and over the life of the transaction. That chance of default could be indicated by the business model that the, the reinsurer has, the type of parental support they're getting, and then certainly the, the credit rating that is placed on that reinsurance company as well. That goes hand in hand with, with also being able to evaluate and analyze if there happened to be a default, what would the loss exposure be in that scenario and being able to model the actual exposure. The exposure is gonna be dictated by the size of the actual liability that's transferred to the reinsurer, as well as any collateral that could be posted or other sources of uh, uh, financial strengthening that could be done to support the treaty. So if collateral is posted, that could help offset some of that exposure, but of course a model would need to be able to understand what kind of shocks could be placed on the actual collateral itself. We would say there's several categories of things you need to assess that might not be as quantitative as the actual modeling, but are important qualitative considerations for going into a transaction. Thing along those lines is when you're assessing the, the collateral package that might be put up, it's not just about quantity of collateral, it can be about the quality of the collateral and the ability to understand what's actually in that collateral package. After all, if a treaty was to go the wrong direction, it could be likely that the insurance company would have to take over management of that collateral package. Secondly, we look at these transactions as typically being strategically important and complex to be able to execute and long-term in nature. So as part of the due diligence process, it's important to understand uh, the experience that a reinsurer brings to be able to execute a potential transaction and service it over the life of it. If there are unexpected outcomes during either of those occurrences, that could lead to unexpected financial cost or increases in the price that was otherwise perceived at the, as part of the selection of the reinsurance company.